So I'm going to give you several. Five. I'm going to give you five dad jokes. Okay? I'm going to read them because I'm not good at telling them. <coughs> There's a fine line between a numerator and a denominator, and only a fraction of people will get this clean joke. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Keep going, I got it. How cute. What do dentists call their x rays? Bad rays. I don't know. <laughs> Toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that one just cracked me up. Because oh. you used to work for dentists, didn't you? Did you work for dentists? Mm -hmm. Diane didn't get it. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? See you later. Nope, nothing. They just waved. See you later. And then the other one is, do you want to hear a construction joke? Sorry, I'm still working on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, it's time for seriousness. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> it's been, what, six weeks? Well, longer, because we were off Christmas, and then last week with the snow and stuff. Um, so it's been probably a good two months since we've been in Hebrews. And uh, we're going to start today, we're just going to pick up right where we left off, in uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verses uh, 3 through 4 to begin with, which I find interesting that it happens to fall on the week where... I feel a lot of Christians have not heard his voice, and uh, because of that, you know, according to the prophetic word from Tommy, but also other words God has shared with us, we're now going to get to enter an interesting season in this country. And uh, but yeah, the thing with uh, the Holy Ghost is, you know, those who know their God will do mighty exploits; they'll be strong. And knowing Him goes beyond; it requires a uh, relationship with him that you know goes beyond your typical relationship of going to church on Sunday possibly meeting some other day of the week it requires you to step outside of that uh, place into your own secret place and then when you come together it just amplifies the strength and the camaraderie and and all of that good stuff so uh, with the beginning of this chapter Paul is comparing the glory of Moses' ministry to the glory of Jesus' ministry, his house, and all of those things. And so here in verses 3 and 4, I am teaching from the Passion, so we're back into that uh, Bible. It says, But Jesus is worthy to receive a much greater glory than Moses, for the one who builds a house deserves to be honored more than the house he builds. Every house is built by someone but God is the designer and the builder of all things. I want to just read this one phrase again. For the one who builds a house deserves to be honored more than the house he builds. And, and we're going to get into that quite a bit because I think one of the biggest idolatrous practices of Christians today is honoring the church, the building, above God. And uh, above Jesus, above the builder. So we'll we'll dive into that in a second. But both Moses and Jesus, they were faithful and worthy of the Father's trust because they completed their assigned task. Now we do know that Moses got angry with the Israelites and he wasn't able to enter the Promised Land, uh, which you know it is what it is. But he did fulfill the assignment of building the Tabernacle of Moses. And, uh, and God gave them the exact blueprint. And so it's always important to examine God's blueprint because within the blueprint is how you're supposed to build. And I think a lot of people are building based on man-made traditions and ideas of what a church or the ecclesia should look like. So actually, I believe that as time goes on and as the shaking continues to rock the nations, because uh, really as America goes, the nations go. It's just that's how it is. But as the church goes, America goes, um, not saying that we are the end all, but we are definitely, at this moment at least, a superpower of which other nations depend on us. Once we're gone, see, that's, that's the whole plan. So anyway, so when you have... Um, this shaking that's occurring, 
in the city of God, which composes of all the building projects, which they're supposed to be people, you've got buildings that have been built, and I'm not talking about uh, physical buildings, I'm talking about spiritual buildings, ecclesias, type people groups are impacting culture and, and, and having influence. Alongside those legitimate buildings, you have the Lego buildings. Men's empires that cannot stand once the shaking occurs, right? So we're going to see in the city of God, we've got both of these things that are going on. And as the shaking continues, the Lego buildings, the men's empires, the hirelings, those that have been building according to man's blueprint, they will fall. They will fall. And the ones that have been building according to his blueprint, they will stand, right? And so that's part of what the shaking is about. We are in Malachi 3, 16 through 18, in case you've been curious. We are in that. We've been in it for probably over 10 years. But it's amplifying and accelerating. Okay. So <clears throat> Paul's audience, he wanted them to understand that Jesus was worthy of more glory than Moses because as God, he is the builder of his own house. Now the word house in the Greek is oikos, like the yogurt. Which is really good yogurt, by the way. And it means simply a house, a dwelling, or a home, but it has deeper meanings. So I'm just going to go through these real quick. It means private home, palace, house of commerce. I thought that was interesting. House of God, such as a tabernacle or temple where the presence of God was manifested and where he is said to dwell. A part of a house, like the dining room or an upper room, like a place of prayer figuratively of persons like believers being the spiritual house of God, a place where evil spirits dwell, thought that was interesting, habitation or abode as in reference to a city or a country, a household, family, or those who live together in a house, family, lineage, posterity, or a whole people or nation as descended from one ancestor. Now the ones in bold which you, know, you can get the handouts on the website, but the ones in bold are the ones that I think apply to us, especially as his house, because together and individually, we make up the house or the dwelling of God. So each one of us are little oikoses of the Holy Spirit, and then collectively, we're his house as well. We're also his family and his posterity. There's no generation past Jesus's. So whenever he would talk and he would say, this generation, I will require of this generation, blah, 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 the generations spiritually ended with him. So there's only one generation left. That's us, the born-again believers, that will go on forever and ever and never die. And then opposed to us is the generation that's after the evil one that the seed has been going through uh, all the centuries that oppose everything that is God's and want to destroy everything that's God's. These people, the seed, take up places of influence. Right? right. They're smart, unlike some of us, where they look for the gates of influence and they strategically place themselves there. Okay? So as the ecclesia, which is what God is building, we too should seek out those places and become people of influence so that we can take a nation or keep a nation as a sheep nation. A sheep nation is qualified by one thing, how they treat God's people. That's it. And so you can see that's why there is a, an overtime working in this country. Like for example, the stupid article that was posted about how nationalism isn't Christianity. Where did this come from? Where did we get this idea that nationalism is bad? Well, if you look at Hitler, and by the way, he had support of the church. Because Martin Luther's views of Jews laid the groundwork for a nation to kill six million of them. Okay? So, he began a nationalistic movement and stole the election. Wasn't it you that talked about that the other day, that he stole the election? Someone did. Who was that? It wasn't even an election. It he was just... Richard, yeah. He stole power. power. Okay. 
in re and so the nationalistic fervor that he used um, took control of that nation because he he played on that because of World War I, they were in debt. It took a wheelbarrow to buy bread during that time. And he also... Well, that was after that time. After World what, War I, yes. After that's what I'm talking about. So then after that, he also wanted to get rid of perversion. So any pornography, he was very much against homosexuals. In fact, they were often the first ones that were sent for the scientific research that they were doing on these people along with people that had mental defect or physical defect. Okay, so he played on the fact that <clears throat> World War I put them in a position of submission to the other nations. So he began this populist movement and then once he took over, he then went and decided to start trying to take other nations, which he did very well for a, a long time. He took the other nations but if you look at his system, it was socialistic and fascist. The very names they're calling us today, right? Mm -hmm. Because to them, nationalism is a loyalty and devotion to a country, but they tie it to the narrative of Hitler. Well, according to the Supreme Court, before they start making unprecedented decisions, the precedent of this nation is we are a Christian nation. And so now, nationalism has, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths, right? So if you're loyal or devoted to this country, you're a fascist. You're a socialist. It's a sleight of hand. So what they're doing is they're calling us that while, guess what? They're focusing the attention over here. And then over here, they're building a socialist network, right? Okay, here's another thing that Christians better wise up on. I didn't mean to go this direction, but it's just... I think it's important, uh, is that they also had what was called a black hat operation. So their Nazi uh, soldiers would dress up as people that were opposing that party, that recognized what was going on, and they would cause problems. The biggest place they did that, what caused the downfall of Poland, is they went into Poland and they acted like they were... Um, protesting and destroying property, etc., etc., but they didn't know it was Nazis. They thought it was Polish people, like what happened on January 6th. See? So we've got to understand how the enemy works, because if we don't understand, I know individuals in this town that were there. And they said they opened the barricade, and they opened the doors, the cops. And they didn't understand. They didn't have a check in their spirit. Hey, something's weird here. This is weird. This is very strange. Maybe we shouldn't go in there. And they did. Now they're scared they're going to get in trouble. They need to be. So there are things that we need to understand that's happening in our country that we need to recapture or we're going to lose this country. So that's where the ecclesia comes in. We are like leaven. The Lord decided to sow us into the world systems. That's what He did. He said, "Upon my ecclesia, I'm, I'm going to build upon the revelation of the Christ. I'm going to build my ecclesia. The gates will not be able to overcome her. Gates are those places, places and positions of influence. And so the church needs to wake up because we've got a structure." Like we learned from that prophetic word, it's safety first. So what did the church do? COVID, they shut down. Dumbest thing ever. And I'm going to tell you, President Trump missed it on that. I have been saying it for months. He should have never shut us down. Never. But what was the hook? What was the Trump card? His love for the people and his phobia of germs. Well, you see what I mean? In the, whoever he had put in well, position. I'm not sure because he know. doesn't trust people very well. I think he probably always wondered if they would betray him. But he probably saw people's ability and place them in that mm -hmm. position to help. They had the credentials. But his love for us, right? So anyway, so we have Pence and Fauci and all them that betrayed this country. So when you take all of this in... And you have the church that just went along with it like 
it was no big deal. So I was going down our street uh, east, uh, well, I'm not going to say where it was. I was going down our street one day, and I said, Lord, how did this happen? You know, how did the church just fall for it? What the heck is going on here? And he said, they, the enemy, took advantage of their the good they want for people. So instead of questioning closing down, oh, we better close down because people might get sick. If you knew the stuff out there that your body has to fight every day, that in itself is dumb, right? And so now we have ourselves, a Pandora's box has been opened, and all of this is because we have been busy building the wrong thing. You see what I mean? Well, Dad, and when you, if you ever see a really stupid house, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Where it makes no sense. It's usually because somebody has taken the original plans and adjusted them. Or everybody's busy building their own part, mm -hmm. right? That's what I mean. That's not the original architect's yeah. blueprints. It's an addition. Oh, I need to remodel this. I need to add on to that. I need to. Mm -hmm. And then, that, then as a whole, it doesn't make sense. Right. Right, and they, there are houses like that because I do yes. some social media for realtors, and I will get those pictures just like, okay, why is there a plug-in in the sink? Okay. We've seen that. I mean, it's crazy. So, but yeah, so we it's important. We are at a critical juncture. The people are crying out revival. People are crying out awakening. That's not going to fix this. It never has. Never. What is going to fix this is the ecclesia assuming her position and doing what she's supposed to do. Revival happens all the time. There's more missionaries sent to Africa than any nation, and they have the most poverty, the most turmoil, the most chaos, the most sickness. We keep repeating the cycle, and it's going to take some people that are like, stop and put a you know, a stick in that cycle and stop the whole thing and say, this is enough. We have got to change what we're doing. And I think the big part of it is going to, see, this is what people need to understand. You're wanting safety now. Your safety now guarantees your lack of safety later. You want peace now. Your peace right now guarantees a lack of peace later. It's, this, it's the same thing when you see countries go down. All the scientists back up what's happening. All the intellectuals go with it. Those super smart people go with it. And then guess who are the first they round up once the new regime takes over? And people may be like, well, you're being alarmist. You're being radical. No, I've actually studied history. I know how it works. We're seeing the same thing occurring here in other nations that Russia, Venezuela, Cuba, etc., well, and, and you also even see, it's almost like a backlash in history. You know, when the Russian, they had the Russian re Revolution, where the common people decided they would take their, well, what did they do? They started killing everybody, as mm -hmm. far as the nobles. Mm -hmm. China did the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you start killing off everybody that, that you feel like has opposed that. Yeah. And so there's a double backlash. It doesn't have to be from the top down. It can be oh, from no. the bottom up. The top down knows that if the top can gain the influence of those at the bottom, then they can let them do their dirty work. And then they enslave them. Mm -hmm. See, it happens well, every time. Mm -hmm. But in Russia, you know, I know in France, you know, they just went and started guillotining everybody. That's, oh, yeah. They That's kill them all. China all then. Too. China let the virus out and the low income people. Well, yeah, to kill them off. To mm -hmm. kill them off and then lock them in the apartments. And me and Tony saw it in 2018, at the end of 2018. I said, who? And they were pulling them out, dead bodies, the whole family in trucks. He said, what's going on? Is there a war in China? I said, no, it's a virus. Well, and the thing is, is that, you know, it's engineered to hit those that have weak immune systems and that are past a certain age, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm just going to say, before we get back to the house, aspect because we're kind of really on it is then you have these crazy people that say they're for freedom christianity etc but they sow in false prophecy fear etc so i know people and i'm just going to call them out it's q and on they're crazy 
And so you have these people that are saying insane stuff, and then some of it can be true. So that's the thing. You can have parts of it that are true, but then they put this crazy stuff on there. So the guy that was in the horn standing in the White House is QAnon. Not Trump, a normal Trump person. He's QAnon. So they, they put these lies in people's head, making it seem like the world is coming to an end, get, sell off everything you have, and go to the hills. There may come a point where we need to go underground, but we're not there yet. So what does that produce? Well, it produces false hope. So you have people that think, oh, well, Trump is doing this, and Trump's doing that, and maybe, maybe we'll still have him as president for the next four years. And then Holy Spirit's like, no. He's not going to be. Pray until the inauguration, absolutely. But that all of that is crap. So Christians, the number one thing I would ask Holy Spirit in 2021 is discernment. We need to have discernment. The lack of discernment among the church is astonishing. I don't see how half the church has missed the role that President Trump played. And because we missed it, now we get the other side, right? So discernment. Years ago, when I was saying how false the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is, I mean, we might as well just Wait out there. kick out everything. When I was saying how false that is, the Holy Spirit said, if I don't tell my people who the Antichrist is when he comes, They'll follow him. Mm -hmm. Here we are so sensitive at how President Trump talked and called people names. Oh, poor little thing. What are you going to do when there's people coming to take away your weapons? Well, here, take it. And the science, the science does not follow the mask. So if your government says, for whatever reason, you've got to do this because it's a safety violation, you've got to take this mark. Oh yeah, they're already talking about digital sure. passports for the uh, airlines. But all they so have to do is make it seem like it's for the benefit of the right. people. Right. And there are, most of America will follow and do that. In we'll that. the book of Thessalonians, I don't remember if it's first or second, it says when everybody is crying out peace and safety. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. I don't think we'll actually have peace and safety. What I think that means is they're going to be crying out for peace and safety. And because they want peace and safety, they're going to fall for a ruler that's going to be the epitome of every antichrist ruler we've had since Nimrod. And so, as believers, like Dorena was reemphasizing from the prophetic word, your safety needs to be third. You got to put skin in the game. You got to be willing to lose something. You got to be willing to lose your reputation, to be called radical, to be called political. You're too political. You know, you got to be. You got to be willing to do what it takes. That's why, guys. And I may not always be right. I can guarantee you that. But that's why I have never shut up on Facebook ever. I've never withdrawn. I've never pulled back. I have always posted stuff that I know will offend people. I know people will say, well, I can't do business with her because she has these opinions. Don't do business with me. That's not what I'm on this planet to do. I'm not here to appease people. I am here to speak truth, right? And so it's very important for discernment. We need to have discernment. And I would practice, practice. You know, when you hear a teaching, ask God to dis help you discern. Like, okay, when are you talking? When is that the person? When is it maybe a spirit? You know, just kind of have Him help you. I used to do that all the time when we went to this uh, certain church. I'd ask Holy Spirit to help me hear the flow of when the person was in their soul and when it was Holy Spirit and when it was a demon. And so I, it was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, that, that's Holy Spirit. And the, ooh, they pull, I could feel it. They pulled back into their soul. And so then I knew they got into um, uh, denomination doctrine. See, they wanted to say more, but they're in a denomination. So they pulled back. Uh, one time we were listening to a guy, everything he said was in the Word, and it was a religious demon, and we walked out. So practice. Ask him to show you ways to practice discernment over this next year, because it's going to be crucial. It's going to be crucial as we um, continue on. Okay, now, the builder of the house... 
has more honor than the house itself. So the word honor is respect, reverence, esteem, rendered or exhibited toward a person or thing. It's also a state or condition of honor, rank, dignity, joined with doxa, which is glory. So it's the assignment of status to a person. Okay, that's what it is. So status is the condition of stature compared to other things. So let me ask you, how is it that many believers position the church they go to above the honor due the Lord? Here's some examples. Where do you go to church? Yeah. I'd like to invite you to church. I know I should go to church, but I know I should leave this church, but I love the people too much. What denom denomination are you? Do you have a church? Where are you serving in your church? It's all about church, right? Most people, they gauge a person being spiritually okay if they go to a church. I hear it all the time. Well, I'll be happy once you know, they start attending a church. Or, well, they were out of the church for a while, but now they're going back. That to them, for some reason, is the, the mark of being a Christian that uh, knows the Lord. I know a lot of people that go to church that are jacked in the head. They're no more serving Him than the enemy. So going to church has nothing to do with your spiritual state being the ecclesia, being who you are in Christ, pursuing the call He's put on you. That is what is important. Fruit, fruit is important in the body of Christ. So the Pharisees, they held their systems, their temple, their traditions, and their priesthood above uh, God himself. Here in Mark 7, 6 through 13, it says, He said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God to hold the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you've handed down and many such things you do. So what's going on? So instead of the Pharisees taking care of their parents like the Bible says you're supposed to it financially and with their needs, they would declare that money as Corbin or set apart for God. Guess where it went? Themselves. To themselves. Because they were paid. Right? <laughs> So they found a way around the Word of God to benefit themselves. And the Passion, it says, you are frauds and hypocrites. Oh my gosh, Jesus name called? You uh -oh. think he is like Trump? <laughs> John ever read John the Baptist's words? Who warned you vipers, you, you know, blah, blah, blahs, to escape hell? That's our congressmen and senators now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have, I think it was the Lord, I could be mistaken, who he called the Pharisees sons of hell, right? Yeah. And sepulchers that held dead man's bones, and that was, in Jewish terms, bad. The worst of the worst. Bad. And insulted. That's strong language. Jesus, I can't believe you use such words. We're supposed to be nice and be civil to one another. How accurately did Isaiah prophesy about you phonies when he said, These people honor me with their words while their hearts run far from me. Their worship is nothing more than a charade. <laughs> charade. For they continue to insist that their man-made traditions are equal to the instructions of God. You abandon God's commandments just to keep men's rituals, such as ceremonial washing, utensils, cups, and other things. Then he added, how skillful you've become in rejecting God's law in order to maintain your man-made set of rules. For Moses taught us, honor your father and mother, and whoever insults or mistreats his father and mother must be put to death. 
But your man-made man rules allow a person to say to his parents, well, I've decided to take the support you were counting on from me and make it my holy offering to God, and that will be your blessing instead. How convenient. The rules you teach exempt him from providing for his aged parents. Do you really think God will honor your traditions passed down to others, making up these rules that nullify God's words? And you are doing many other things like that. Then Jesus called the crowd together and said, Hear my words, all of you, and take them to heart. I cannot imagine the people when they heard yeah. him talking to the Pharisees like that. I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, others would play all. You know, because he was taking the fight to them and they knew how ruthless they were and probably where he would end up. But that was his plan the whole time, right? So I fear the same mistakes being made today. People seem to have more reverence for their church than the Lord. We honor him by doing what he says. Okay, so in some denominations, you don't even have to be warned again. You just have to be a member. Well, that, and we all know that there's uh, different denominations. You have to go out and visit so many times. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure and tithe. Are you are going to oh, you are going to hell if you don't I mean, tithe. That's right. Just, you know, that's, right. that's in their list You're of things you have to do. Yeah. And then we get into even, I think it's even more cultish, but, you know, you can't celebrate this holiday. You can't. Women you have to wear dresses. Them. You can't wear makeup. Exactly. Men have to have short hair and right. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's, to me, when those things become more than Holy Spirit said, mm -hmm. when it becomes, you know, more important to you to follow those made-up rules yeah. than it is what Holy Spirit has said, then... And you know what's fascinating about all those things is um, just simply reading the New Testament and maybe looking up a few words and, uh, you know, see what they really mean would solve all those problems. See? Because the Word is very plain in what the New Covenant looks like. And do you think, though, that there are some people that do know that that's a bunch of hooey? Yes. But it's so much easier just to go along. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the harm in me going ahead and doing this or not doing this? Right. Or, you know, to fit in. Right. To make you, you comfortable to whatever. And so they end up doing a whole bunch of the rules and all the stuff that... 65% of the population is the personality style that's very hum humble and accommodating. And they want to nurture, and they want to go along with everybody, and they don't want anybody to be upset, and they want peace, and blah, blah, blah. So that's 65% of the population. And that's a good thing, but any strength overextended becomes a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. So when those strengths now have you in a system that keeps you limited or promoting a system that is harmful and keeps Christians immature, then we have a problem. So that's where people like Trump, D personalities, come along and say the Christian population is the biggest target market in this country, yet the least effective, right? Yeah. So 